Hello and welcome back to yet another video here at Linux with Carlos. So today I bring you my Surface Go 1. This is a device I've had for a few years. I bought it for school thinking that, yeah, a Microsoft device with Windows might work well because Microsoft makes both of them. Well, how wrong was I? It was unusable from day one and I bought it pretty on, pretty, pretty early, early on when it was still uh, very new and it was already unusable. So uh, here I, I'm showing you my BIOS. Um, just disable secure boot and TPM or TLP or whatever that name is and check my BIOS. I'm not sure if there's anything other than that that's not standard so check it see if yours is the same if it isn't try different combinations of things and it might work so i installed windows uh on this yesterday those were some three or four painful hours of installing and accepting all of that telemetry and being spied upon and making my machine utterly useless so this is actually sped up uh this took like two minutes to boot up it was incre incre incredible unbelievable it was gosh i've never had that experience with linux and yeah i know i'm just complaining but it must be complained about look at this it's still open and it this is sped up you know it's it's painful to watch Oh my gosh, look at that. It's still turning. Finally, I cut. So, um, start by disabling um, BitLocker. If you've had a Microsoft account on your device, BitLocker might be on. And that's a big problem that I had early on. And I almost bricked my device with that. So, make sure you know your uh, Microsoft account if, if you ever used one. And disable it on your Microsoft account and disable it on your computer. So here I'm showing you a uh, Bing search because I'm lazy to open Google on uh, how to find the, um, the, 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 the ways of uh, turning it off. So you just search for it and you, you find a few results follow that it's always a bit of a hassle you know microsoft and everything you kind of have to do everything through workarounds which is so weird to be honest it's it doesn't make sense that things don't work properly but yeah you have a bunch of steps that you have to follow in your microsoft account and in your computer and then bitlocker will be unlocked do this before actually turning off secure a secure boot otherwise it will be weird um so yeah now you have to go to get your usb i am using ventoy on my usb on the previous video that will be linked right here um i showed you how to install ventoy on this usb stick and actually uh, I don't know if it's because of the new version of Ventoy, but I could actually just boot from my USB now because I tried it. But as I'm not sure if I changed something on the on the computer, I will show you the standard way of doing it, which is going to the recovery and then doing that workaround to open to to boot from your USB, your USB uh, device. But if you have already made a Ventoy USB device. Try it before doing this and tell me in the comments if it works as well because it worked for me and before it didn't. So maybe Ventoy updated or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, you, you go to the uh, recovery um, boot thing, choose a device and it will have Limpus Lite and that's the USB device. But I just clicked the, that option because that it wasn't there. And I would have to reboot a few times for it to work. And somehow it's working for me. But it used to not work. That's the thing. So I advise you to go through the recovery thing. But either way, try to just boot your, your tablet with the USB stick on Vent, uh, with Vento installed. 
and see if it works. If it works, good, you don't have to open windows. Uh, if it doesn't, you have to open windows and go through the painful process of um, going to the recovery, seeing if there's limpus light. It will not be limpus light, so you'll have to restart and then do it again and then do it again and maybe it will never show. So then you, what you have to do is get a new USB stick and actually flash the OS directly on the USB stick and that way it works as well. But maybe the guys at Ventoy made something that makes it work well on, on Surface devices. So that's cool. Uh, but it used to be a huge nightmare. So that way you have both options that I just told you and the one I showed you on the screen. So uh, yeah, I just booted on Fedora. And um, now I am waiting for it to uh, to start so I can start the installation. This is pretty much straightforward because it's a, a Fedora installation. So you choose your language, your keyboard. As I don't use an English keyboard, I actually had to do a few more steps, but I, I cut them out. Uh, choose your, uh, your your drive. And I always just delete everything and do an automatic partition. Uh, sometimes I do manual to add a swap, to, to add some swap memory so it hibernates better. But now it seems like it's starting to hibernate quite well. So I don't have any problems with that anymore. And now it just wait much less than if you were to install Windows. And uh, voila, 20 minutes at most, you have a Fedora machine. So now I'm just checking to see how the installation is working uh, out of the box when it comes to touch and camera, because some people in the comments said that the camera was working out of the box. Not for me. Maybe that's because I am on a Surface Go and the person in the comments said that their Surface Go 2 was working out of the box. So... Yeah, now I just uh, restarted it and it actually took quite a while, I don't know why, but um, yeah, now we have Fedora on our machine. The thing with Fedora is, I'm not sure if it's still the same, but before, uh, a few months ago, if you installed Fedora and you wanted to distro hop, you would have to install Windows 10 and go through all of that process again to install another distro. But if you installed Ubuntu or any Ubuntu based distro, you would be able to just install any other distro however you liked it. But this time uh, I tried as well and it seems like even if you install Fedora, you can boot from a USB device. So I don't know, maybe it might be my specific device as it has have some, it's been on Linux for a while, maybe I got some sort of firmware update from the Linux part, I don't know, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, just something to, uh, to stay aware. Here I never know how to choose because I want the third party repositories, but I have no idea if when I click, I activate them or deactivate them. You know, it's so weird that, that the way they, they chose to design that. That's the only negative thing I have about their installer. It's just when it comes to the third party, I, I never know if I'm activating or deactivating them, which is weird. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I just finished my uh, setup when it comes to user and everything. And now I will start to just install um, a few extensions and also the Linux kernel. That's not something that you have to do. You don't need to install the Surface Linux kernel, but you can. It's something the, that, that will help you. So now I will use mainly my hands and the mouse because, uh, yeah, both work very well, you know, it's incredible. Compared to Windows, you can actually use this device only on the screen. And with Windows, it 
I never left home when I had Windows on this computer without my keyboard because I knew I wouldn't be able to use it. But with Linux, I've lost my keyboard for this tablet quite a few times and I've had to search for it all over my house. And um, I wasn't worried because I knew I could do pretty much everything. The only thing that doesn't work very well is copy and paste. So now I'm installing this tool that uh, helps with power management. It, it's it's actually very, very useful. Um, and I will leave a link for this tutorial on the description. Uh, I am dyslexic and I can't remember the name. TLP, exactly. TLP. So that's TLP. It's a very, very nice tool. It really helps with... Um, with battery life actually, which is something I thought wouldn't make a lot of difference, and it did. But again, the Surface Go on Linux, the battery is extraordinary. You, it, it just goes and goes and goes. As you can see, I'm doing all of this without a charger. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I only use the charger to install Windows because it takes hours to install and Windows just drains your battery like crazy, which is something I, I actually found crazy because, you know, it just gets me mad because Microsoft made this, designed this tablet to work with their own operating system. One would assume that they would optimize Windows 10 and 11 to work well on this device and actually be use, use, usable. It wasn't usable from day one. And that's the, the crazy part. And the battery life was absolutely miserable. It's, it's shameful, really. It's really shameful for their part because you buy this device and you have to pay for a Windows license. And if you want to have a Linux uh, tablet, you pretty much only have them because the other brands are kind of weird with their tablets and you never know if they work or not. But yeah, I might try some China tablets. There's some tablets from China that have Windows and I will try them if I get any money. So now I'm following the um, tutorial to, to install... Um, the surface kernel um so i just follow the tutorial but i leave the secure boot for last and i also um jump through this part here um of writing all of that in that specific path it's just a headache and i can just uh, check if my kernel is the right one and if it isn't then I deal with it I've never had a problem and I never do that part so that's the thing and the, you also have that that, that uh, line of code that just you know puts the surface kernel as a default and it always works so now I'm activating secure boot uh, because we actually installed Secure Boot with the Surface Kernel. But I believe you didn't even have, have to do that because Fedora now supports Secure Boot. Uh, this part is really sped up uh, because um, it was long and I was doing stuff very slowly. I don't know why, but yeah. I, I just checked to see if my kernel was the right one and I'm checking it to see if the Secure Boot is still enabled. And it's working wonders perfectly so I just restarted the computer and now I will install a few extensions as you saw I go to the accessibility settings in the lock screen to have the keyboard on the lock screen and now I'm going to GNOME extensions and I'm installing a few extensions such as uh, GS connect um, dash to dock Caffeine, probably, yes. And hide icons. Oh, it's very good for this. Just saw it. I checked the camera, it wasn't working. And I also installed improved on screen keyboard. As you can see, now I have a keyboard on the screen. And yeah, now I will 
test the screen so I will just you know update the system through terminal and the on-screen keyboard is awesome it even gives you suggestions of words it's very nice and yeah so just rebooted the tablet a few times for no reason at all thanks for watching see you in my next video